Hey, welcome everybody. This is Joseph Ixu and welcome to our Premier Castle Realty Spotlight. What we're going to talk about today is going to be a market update for December 2021. And we're also going to discuss our upcoming guest. Um, so we can kind of give you an idea of what the market's doing in your area and uh, Tyrant County, uh, Johnson County and Parker County. And we're also going to be looking at some numbers from our active MLS. So you can get some insight in exactly what the market is doing today for the December 21 uh, housing report. Okay, so just want to let you know that um, as of right now, inventory numbers has dropped in December of 2021, the lowest figure since the start of the pandemic. So we have a lot of information to cover, and that's just a little bit of a glimpse of what's coming up. So here we go. Let's get started. Take it away. Okay, so before we get any further uh, in our presentation, I want to let you guys know that we have a guest that's going to be coming up uh, in the near future. His name is David Mendez. Uh, he is a mortgage broker associate with mortgage matters okay and he's a really good guy he's uh, helping a couple of my clients right now and we're working steadily to get to the closing table and for a uh, purchase of a home and he's doing a fantastic job and my clients are very happy so i thought i'd bring him on so you can kind of explain uh, from the lender's point of view uh, some of the items that are happening in the market so you guys get uh, a bird's eye view of the 2022 housing market how about that I, th I thought you guys might like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be covering Fort Worth uh, update first um, so that you guys can see exactly what's been happening here in this market. Okay, so as of uh, December of 2021, as you can tell, uh, median prices have increased to 25.4% compared to 2020. Now, on a national average, uh, prices have not increased that much. Um, but uh, they are still steadily uh, increasing, um, not as much as uh, here in the Fort Worth area, which is uh, actually pretty cool. Uh, so especially for sellers. <laughs> so I think uh, I think they would like that. OK, so active listings have actually continued to go down at 26.5 percent compared to 2021. So this is what's causing the higher prices. OK, if we have lower inventory, we have more people looking for a house or even the same number. You know, if we have lower inventory, those prices are going to actually go um, up. And if you take a look at the close rates uh, or close sales, you've got 8.3 percent less than uh, December of 2021. So um, actually less than last year. But uh, this is of the, as of December 2021. Um, so uh, days on the market on total uh, days to days on market is 28 days to close have been 39 a total of 67 days that's five days less than the December of 2020 and as you can see the inventory for Fort Worth inventory is less than one month so that's considered a seller's market that's a serious seller's market you know 6.5 it's considered probably about a you know a even market uh, and um, basically equilibrium between the sellers and the buyers uh, we're definitely in a seller's market at the moment. Okay, uh, one thing that I want you guys to focus on over here is the price ranges. Okay, the most of the homes have been sold between two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. Now there has been some four hundred to five hundred, but majority of homes are selling in the two hundred to four hundred, and that could be directly related to the increase in prices. As you can see, the median price has increased to three twenty five three hundred. So Fort Worth is active and very very uh, very hot. So uh, how, how does that compare to Tarrant County? You know, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. So, uh, you know, inventory for the both Fort Worth and Tarrant County has, was at 0.7%, uh, basically less than one month of inventory. So both Tarrant and Fort Worth are about the same on that. So let's take a look at exactly those numbers in Tarrant County. Um, as you can see, <clears throat> the months of inventory, like I was just stating, it was 77 uh, which is um, lower than 2020. Uh, we were a little bit under 1% as of 2020 in December, but still, that's still a seller's market. So we've been in the seller's market for quite a bit. So take a look at, uh, you know, the median price range and increase to 330 uh, in the whole county. Uh, that is, that's an increase of 22.2%. 
And also, if you take a look at the prices on the homes, which it still correlates to Fort Worth, 200,000 to 400,000, the primarily the biggest chunk of homes being sold in this in the Tarrant County area. Days on market, as you can say, it's been 64 days. That's five days less than 2020, so houses are moving slightly faster. We do have a, um, a decrease in, in uh, active listings. So if you can compare that, that's 27.5% less than in 2020. Uh, closed sales actually obviously again if you have less active listings it's going to correlate to less closed sales because of just the numbers that are lower than the previous year so we have a 5.5 percent less than uh, than in the in the previous year so you know Tarrant County is uh, correlating with um, Fort Worth and as far as the home prices the increase in price for the medium homes and also and uh, the lower on the inventories. So again, we continue to have a seller's market throughout the whole county. Now, Johnson County, uh, it's a little bit different story, uh, but and nevertheless, you know, um, you know, let me give you a, a little bit of information that came out from the Texas Real Estate Research Center at Texas A&M. You know, basically, it's exactly what I was telling you. 6.5 months of inventory represents a market which supply and demand homes is for homes are balanced right now we're at 0.7 okay that's less than one percent okay so um that's something that we got to think about when we're looking at the numbers and here we go let's look at johnson county speaking of numbers so um the median price has increased to 317 that's an increase of 26.3 percent from december of 2020. Uh, every single county is increasing okay every single um homes prices are going up so what's the what's the correlation between when you're buying right now well if you wait too long to buy let's say for example you're a buyer if you wait too long you know interest rates are going up and prices are going up so it might you know uh, get you out of the market just because of qualifications in regards to the prices and the amount of money that you'll be paying for interest because you know the lower the interest the more home you can buy and that's just uh, simple math Okay, so uh, active listings, we are lower at 22.8%. Um, and also closed sales. Now, closed sales actually increased. So we have a 5.9% increase from um, the previous year. Take a look at the days on the market, total of 73. And here in the Johnson County, we have one month of inventory compared to 1.3 in 2020. Regardless of what market you're looking at, inventories are low and prices are high. So uh, if you're looking to get into the market now, it's, really, it's better if you do it quickly. That way you have a best opportunity to purchase. Now, uh, as we continue to go through the year, the market is only going to get hotter. So right now the winter season is used, it's a pretty good time. Relatively speaking, winter has been uh, kind of slow pre in, previous, uh, in previous years. However, since we've had a seller's, uh, seller's market, uh, it actually maintains pretty hot and uh, it's probably the best time for first-time home buyers to look at homes because uh, they may not be as much competition but nevertheless you're still going to have competition and it's only going to get worse towards the spring so that's something to think about okay so uh, you know the next the next county that we're going to be looking at is going to be Parker County and obviously Parker County is a little bit more rural and uh, it tends to have a little bit higher prices so let's take a look at those numbers. All right, so the median price for Parker County, based on this report, is 412561 Now, take a look at the housing, uh, the prices have been selling. So the median price has increased. We have uh, it increased 28.9%. And take a look at the homes that have been selling. From 200 to 300,000, 26.7%. Okay, from 300 to 400,000, 254 and this is relatively high, 500 to 750, 22.5%. So, you know, in this particular range, you're talking, you know, Weatherford, you're talking Alito, uh, Willow Park, uh, Hudson Oaks. In those areas, you know, a little bit more rural going towards Weatherford. Um, uh, but nevertheless, you got more land, the house is a little bit bigger, and this correlates to the bigger prices. So we do have an increase in active listings. We have a 3.8%, uh, 468 in December of 2021. Closed sales, 1.2% uh, lower. Uh, so that represents 323 homes sold in December of 21 in Parker County. 
you know, days on market, 79 days, a total of 33 days uh, on market and days to close 46. Now the inventory is 1.7. So it's actually a little bit better than Johnson. However, the prices are going up and active listings are up, but sales are lower. And that really correlates to the actual prices on the homes. Uh, and also obviously um, it's a little bit rural, a little bit away from Fort Worth, the major you know, employer in the areas, uh, usually in those particular uh, cities. Okay, so uh, if we take a look at uh, today's MLS, um, so what I wanted to do is kind of give you an idea of what the numbers are. So this particular summary that you're looking at right now, it's a, it's a bit, it was done on the 27th of January. And what I've done is I've taken the 27th and today to compare to kind of give you some insight. So if you take a look at these numbers here, let's just start from the top. New listings on the 27th were 1812. New listings uh, right now on the 31st. Now this is for the last seven days, 1633. And so there's obviously some uh, overlap, but I just wanted to show you how the market actually is, is doing. Okay, so back on the market, you know, look at that 495 to 509. Uh, price increases 582. Now let me tell you a little bit about back on the market. That could be somebody that actually was actually looking to buy a home and they did an inspection and the inspection came out pretty bad and it came back in the market. Or there were some other issues like maybe appraisals. We've been having appraisal issues right now with either homes or new construction homes, specifically new construction uh, because of the price of materials have gone up. However, you know, the appraisers are looking at the prices within the, the relative area of that subdivision and also about one mile out that's re relatively what they like to look at and they have to be comparables to that home. So uh, if there's an issue with appraisal, it's because of possibly a new construction and they have an increase in, in construction costs, but it hasn't been reflective in the appraisals as of yet. Uh, we're looking towards the future and I think that's gonna catch up, but as of right now, we're still having some. I had an issue with one of those for one of our clients uh, regarding the appraisal on a new construction home. So that's why I know that's definitely something that's happening out there. Uh, so uh, price decreases five uh, look at that 583 five, 549 now uh, obviously there the three factors that you look at to sell the house is location condition and price okay those three factors are really what guides the 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 sale of a home now if you're if the house that you're selling or you're looking at is not in the best condition then obviously you want to take a look at maybe reducing the price and a lot of, because we're in a seller's market, most sellers will try to sell it at a higher rate. And then they end, they end up being on the market for a little long, specifically if the condition's bad. And then obviously start reducing prices. This is exactly what's happening here. And I've seen it. I have uh, some clients that we placed some offers on homes. And after the inspection, we just uh, walked away. It was just too much stuff. So, um, <clears throat> but also price increases, that's going up too. That could be based on an appraisal also. So it's a double-edged sword with appraisal. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. It all depends on, on the location. Every single subdivision city has their own little economy. So uh, that's why um, the appraisals play such a big factor. Okay, active kickout. That basically means that somebody has a contract on a house that so they're looking to purchase, but they still have to sell something else. Most of the time, we'll set it up as a kickout. So if you're the buyer on a particular home and you have a property to sell, the seller can put it where it's there's a, some documentation that's needed and some uh, you know uh, disclosures that basically states that if they get the same or a better offer they can they can knock you off the contract uh, within a couple of days depending on what's on the contract and if you cannot remove the the you know the the contingency so most of the time is the sale of another property but we're in a seller's market so hopefully that's not happening a lot so. Active option contracts, that's uh, people that are actually looking to purchase, they made an offer, it's been accepted. They're basically right now doing the inspections, which we highly recommend that you do in every single home that you in, go into. Now, sometimes if you're, if you're looking to purchase a house and, you're, and you don't like the condition or you can't negotiate repairs with the seller and you have to get out of that contract, then obviously the more houses you go and look at and the more offers you make, uh, the more inspections you're going to do. So that could be that could be running between three to four hundred dollars per inspection, depending on the company and depending on the size of the house, sometimes more. So 
but it's better to be safe than sorry okay so active contingency that's if there is a contingency on the cell sometimes it's financing sometimes it's another home so it all depends but that's what's going on there pending that's they're almost closing they're past inspection and they're heading towards closing that so they're they're making sure that everything's good on the house all the repairs have been done or agreed upon and then you know the closing dates coming up there could be some issues still because if there's issues with financing or you know qualifications with the lender then that could stop the deal on its tracks okay sold sold look at 2308 on the 27 2776 on the 31st okay uh, I'm sorry that was pending 2513 on the 20 on the 31st okay expired listings uh, it went from 86 to 92 now again <clears throat> That could be for several factors, but the primarily factor that we're looking at is condition. And, you know, if the seller is looking um, to sell the property and it's not an appropriate price range for the condition, then that's where you run into those problems. Okay. So, you know, <clears throat> right now, as you can tell with all these numbers and basically the, the amount of uh, homes that are on the market and also the, you know, the obstacles that you have to face as, an, as a buyer, you know, they're very, very frustrated, okay? I know my clients are frustrated right now. Um, we're, we're on the uh, we're negotiating a contract on a home and the seller is just being a little bit more um, detailed than in other seasons, for example, okay? But, you know, we expect 2022 to be even more competitive. So <laughs> this is why I was telling you, it's, it's time to get going if you're gonna purchase, you know, um, as we already discussed, we're starting out 22 with a low record lows of availability and inventory. Right now, the first quarter of 2020, it looks like it's going to be the best time to purchase for those first time home buyers and buyers who are not cash buyers before the market really heats up again in the spring. OK, that's the, the for buyers. Uh, I would if, if you're in the bar, if you're in the market to purchase, it's time to do it now. OK, because the high demand and low supply will continue to drive up prices. That's it's, it's going to do it. So uh, you just got to keep that in mind. So uh, let's see. What are we talking about? Cancellations, withdrawals, temporary off the market, and coming soon. Those are the numbers corresponding. Now, coming soon, that's when a property is actually getting ready to be so uh, to come on the market and um, and is either being clean or being, you know, uh, just prepared. Okay. I have, I have a couple of properties coming soon. Basically, uh, we're working on... Uh, getting the house cleaned out, make sure that uh, everything looks good to make it uh, the best first impression as possible. So that's the tale of the story. Let me show you uh, what's going on in the market. Um, let me see. No, oh, that's not the one I want. Uh, let me see spotlight. Okay, it's not showing. Let me see. Let me give, give me a minute. All right, here we go. There we go. Now it's working. All right. So what you're seeing in front of you right now is basically the trends that are happening right now. And uh, I'm comparing Tarrant County with Fort Worth. And we can do it with all of them, but I'm just going to do Tarrant County. So basically sales price. Okay. If you take a look at the sales price. Hold on for a second. I got too many screens going on here. If you take a look at the sales price, uh, the average sales price, if you look at the January of 2020, it was 228 uh, look at the sales price right now, 307. That's on average. Okay. Uh, now, what are we comparing? We're comparing three bedrooms for resale, all sizes, and all years. Okay. And when, I'm really looking at all prices. But if I wanted to say I wanted to take a look at uh, the the bread and butter, 252 to uh, 349. So these are the numbers for December 2021. So we're looking at for Tarrant County. A 296.903, and for Fort Worth, we're actually looking at uh, 300. And take a look at what ha what was happening in the, uh, December of 20 of uh, 2020. I mean January 2020, 289, 288. So, relatively speaking, we have a pretty a pretty nice increase, and that corresponds to the numbers that I showed you earlier. Now let's take a look at homes for sale. So this is where uh, the inventory is falling, falling, falling. Okay. House uh, homes for sale as of right uh, in December, we're talking about 179 and 345 in, uh, in January 2020. And if we look at now, 
we're looking at 112 for Fort Worth and 245 for Tarrant County. So as you can tell, those trends, though, the graph just gives you a better view of what's happening. I can tell you the numbers, but when you look it up and you see it in the screen, it's a big difference. So let's take a look at the new listings. So new listings are um, in, in January 2020, we had 93 in January and 229 in Tarrant County. Uh, we're looking at uh, in 2021, uh, 388 in Tarrant County and 163 in Fort Worth. And that's only in that price range that I'm showing you right there. Okay. Pending sales. So pending sales, we have 169 in Fort Worth and 404 in Tarrant County. Let's look, compare that to January of last year. Look at that, 65 and 192. So, you know, obviously the sales are increasing. Uh, but the homes are actually were on their one month of uh, inventory. So days on the market, this is where it really tells. Look at that. We are, are less than 16 days for the Fort Worth and 17 days for Tarrant County. Take a look at last year at this same time. Look at this. 57, 39. So, and it started dropping there. You see that? Look at that. It just kept on going down. Okay. Now we're up right now because it's it's typically like I said the slowest time frame, uh, and if you take a look at this area right here, that's the summer, and this right here we started in the, in the January, boom 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 going down. So uh, close sales. So here we go, close sales for Tarrant County, uh, December of twenty one, we had uh, five sixty three and two forty five in Fort Worth, and if we look at uh, in January twenty twenty, we had thirty seven. And 19. See, this correlates to typically, you know, this the 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 winter is typically a slower part of the year. But as you can tell, that has a uh, that has changed. Okay, look at that. If you look at a March, it started going up in March, spring time frame, going down a little bit, but then boom, we got July. You got June, July. Look at the home sales. Okay. Um, Let's see, month supply, which is a very important one. Whew, can you believe that? Look at that number, look at that drop. If you take a look at January of, 20 of uh, 2020, even in Fort Worth, we had 2.5, and that's still a seller's market. But look at this, okay, September of 2020, the low point being in uh, January of 2021. Look at January of, uh, I'm sorry, December of 2021, 0.5, 0.6, and over here 0.7 so these are the numbers that are happening as of uh as of december of 2021 and as you can tell we're still in a very very competitive market okay so i'm hoping that you find this uh, quick uh, market snapshot the review um uh helpful and i just want to kind of give you some ideas of what the experts are saying okay According to Sam Caker uh, from Freddie Mac, Chief Economist, mortgage rates increased in the first week of 2022 to the highest level since May of 2020. So, and more of the half a percent higher than 20, uh, January of 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm telling you, that um, interest rates are going up, prices are going up, interest rates are going up. And let me tell you something. If the, we have higher inflation, Okay, which it seems like it's coming. Um, there is a promise of economic growth, but you know we'll see what happens with the Fed increasing the the rates in the Thai labor market. Um, the experts expect rates to be continuing to to increase. Now we did a market uh, update for 2022, and you know the expert were stating that the the highest rate for 2022 was going to be like four uh, percent. Okay, now 4% compared to, relatively speaking, to other years is relatively a low number. However, we're used to like in the threes. And right now, depending on your credit, depending on that candidate, and also, you know, the, the home, you, you're looking right now, I'm sorry, your credit score, right now, there's people already getting at 4%, and we're only in January, okay? So uh, it's very, very hard to judge that right now, but I tell, I'm telling you, we are expecting it to go up. So um, basically, and this is exactly what experts are saying, okay? Uh, economists expect rising rates to help cool or slow demand. Now, 
you know, it's, it, it's going to slow demand, but the housing market is still going to be relatively hot because the housing, the amount of houses out there uh, is actually low. And so a lot of people were saying, you know, as far as, you know, possibly a market crash. So as long as inventories are low, people are always going to want to buy a house. OK, and if the economy is doing better or we have some growth, uh, no matter the inflation, I mean, if you look at back at 20, 2008, when we had the economic crisis, there were still homes being sold then. OK, I know. I know it's crazy, right? Uh, but it, it did happen. OK, so increase along with uh, escalating home prices will impact affordability, pricing for some buyers out of the market. So basically, it could price some buyers out of the market. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to leave you with that information. I think it's important for you guys to understand what's going on in the market. Hopefully you, you uh, appreciate uh, the update and can um, you know utilize it to make informed decision. Don't forget, we're having David Mendez come in, Mortgage Broker Associate with Mortgage Matters. He'll be in um, probably sometime this week, so we're trying to get that schedule. And we're going to be giving you some more insight from the lender's perspective of what's actually what they're seeing and what obstacles um, their clients are actually facing. Okay, um, if you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, this is, our, this is our phone number information. Give us a call. You can give us a call at 833-722-7853. You can call and send us an email at info at premiercastlerealty.com. There's our websites, premiercastlerealty.com or CO for company. Uh, follow us on social media. We have our information right there in front of you, so you see it right there at the bottom of the screen. Uh, give us, a, you know, give us a follow, give us a thumbs up, and also if you're interested in receiving a sellers and buyers guide, we can definitely send that to you. Just send us information to info at premiercastlerealty.com/slash buyers and sellers guides, and we'll go ahead and send that information to you um, uh, so that you can get that as soon as possible. Okay, so. Again, thanks again for um, giving us an opportunity to uh, show you what the market's doing. Hopefully you like it and give us a, a thumbs up. Follow us on, um, on, on social media. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. Bye.